this is what most of you all think a chemical reaction is, stuff burning. But that's not all chemical reactions. There's a lot of other ones. We'll do these in a lab as well. We'll be looking for these things as proof of reaction. You know what the first two are. The third one, a precipitate, is when you pour two solutions together, two things that could look like water, they could be colored solutions, but it's two totally dissolved things. And a precipitate is when a solid forms out of nowhere and it falls to the bottom. And typically you would know that because the solution gets really cloudy, you can't see through it anymore. You get these really big particles that fall to the bottom. That's what a precipitate is. You may have heard of precipitation as a weather event, and that's when dissolved water in the air becomes too big and it falls to the ground as snow or sleet. Um, could be freezing rain or rain. Or um, the other thing is a total change in properties, which could be like, think of water. Water you use to put out fires. But what's water made of? Hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is extremely flammable and oxygen helps things burn. So you might say hydrogen and oxygen have one set of properties and water has a totally different set of properties. So these are all different kinds of chemical reactions. And you ought to be able to look at these and figure out what the proof of reaction is. In the first one, the apple, you can see that the one side of the apple is starting to brown. That's because it's oxidizing. Something's stealing the electrons from the apple. There's an enzyme doing that. That's proof of a chemical reaction because it looks vastly different. On the second one, you're pouring two solutions together and making a yellow precipitate. That's what a precipitate does. The third one across the top in the big Erlenmeyer flask, you can see bubbles being given off. And that's a mixture of hydrochloric acid and zinc. And it's producing smoke coming out the top and it's also producing bubbles of gas. On the lower left, this is milk that's gone bad. And you can say, huh, Wonder what happened there? Well, that was a chemical reaction. As the proteins and fats and things in the milk get digested by different bacteria and fungi, it produces a totally different set of properties than what the milk had originally. Glow stick, you can see light being given off there. That's a proof of reaction. And last but not least, this is the formation of a precipitate. You've got one solution on top, a totally different solution on the bottom. You can see it's actually kind of blue. And then right there in the middle, at what we call the interface, where the two meet, you see a precipitate forming. Those are all proofs of reaction. When we write chemical equations, we're not going to use equal signs. We're going to use an arrow. So the arrow means yields. So whenever you write, let's say H2 plus O2 makes, for that makes, we want to write a yield sign or that arrow. Sometimes we'll want to designate by shorthand what the state of matter is. So S and C are the same thing. S means solid. C means crystalline. So really they mean the same thing. Solids. So you would write this after a chemical. So you might write NaCl parentheses S. And that would show you that it's solid salt. L is liquid. So you might write H2O liquid. H2 gas. That one's easy. AQ means aqueous. AQ means dissolved in water. Some of you have made it, may have heard it called aqueous. But AQ means dissolved in water. An up arrow means bubbles are being made and they're rising to the top. Most people don't use that, but in case you see it. And a down arrow means a precipitate was formed and it fell to the bottom. Most people don't use that either, but just in case you see that somewhere in life, you know what that is. If you think about it, a gas that forms really is a precipitate. It's something that forms and either goes to the top or goes to the bottom. And the last but not least, this little symbol right here, the delta symbol, we use not for designating where you can put up a TP or where you can put up a tent, but we use this to designate heat. So if you heat up a chemical reaction, you want to put the delta symbol above the arrow. Let's say that we start out with some nitrogen. Let's say that we start out with the same amount of hydrogen, three and three. And we wanna see how much ammonia we can make. I've got three and three. Right now I've got, the balances are pretty heavy. So let's see.
Okay, I've used up all my hydrogen. As you can see, I started out with six. I've got six. There's one, two, three on this molecule. And one, two, three on this molecule. So the problem is, even though I started out with equal amounts, it's not working out because I've got to have more hydrogen than I do nitrogen. Because in the end, I've got three times as many hydrogens as I do nitrogen in the molecule. And the reason why we have to balance equations is because uh, of the law of conservation of mass. Meaning, however much mass you start with on the left is how much mass you start with on the right. This is no different from anything else. We can do the same thing with water. I want to make one water molecule, right? I'm going to need two hydrogens for that. So I'll put two hydrogens over here. And I'm going to need one oxygen because there's one oxygen. So I'll need one oxygen. The only problem is oxygen comes as a doublet, comes as a pair. So if you look down here at the scales down here, I'm heavy on the oxygen. It's not all balanced out. So how do I solve that? The way I solve it is I look at doubling other things. I look at increasing other things so I get the ratio right. So let's see, I gotta have two oxygens over here means I need two oxygens on the left. Now I've got two oxygens on the left, two oxygens on the right. My oxygen is all balanced. Is my hydrogen okay? No, not really. I've got four on the left over here and only two on the right. So, and I got a smiley face, hooray. So the importance of balancing equations is the law of conservation of mass. However much stuff you start out with on the left over here is the same amount of stuff you gotta end up with on the right. You can't create matter, nor can you destroy matter. You can't just have a hydrogen disappear. All right, so just a couple notes about balancing equations. Whenever you balance a chemical equation, you're never allowed to change the formula. So you can't change CH4 just to make your life better. You can only put numbers out front. Balancing a chemical equation is just like fixing a recipe for something. You can't just go, well, I just will change the number in the recipe to make my life easier. You have to look at the ratios of things, and that's really what we're trying to find here. Anytime you balance a chemical equation, you wanna do a couple things. Only put numbers out front. I can only change things in the little blue slot out in front of each formula. Can't change anything else. Number two, if you see an element that lives in a lot of places, ignore that one. Do that one very, very last. For instance, in this example, I would not do oxygen first. Oxygen uh, occurs here, here, and here, all three places. And so that is not going to be helpful. So what we wanna start with is things that only exist in one place. One carbon, one carbon, good. Four hydrogens on that side, two hydrogens on this side. So you have to ask yourself, what number do you multiply two by to get four? Now I have four hydrogens on the left, four hydrogens on the right, and that makes this a balanced equation for hydrogen. After I've done everything else, I wanna go ahead and do the oxygen. Okay, so I've got two here, two here, and two more here, because that's two times one is two oxygens. How do I fix that? Two on the left, a total of four on the right. How do I fix that? Simply enough, I just put a two out front. That'll give me a total of two times two is four, and that matches up, so that equation is balanced. Let me show you another example, one that ends up being a little weird in terms of how we balance things. So let's burn some alcohol. Let's look at balancing it. I've got two carbons on the left. I will give myself two carbons on the right. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, hydrogens on the left, I need to give myself six hydrogens on the right. And I, I save the oxygen till last because oxygen's all over the place. So here's where it gets a little sticky. We go two times two is four oxygens, three more is seven. There's nothing you can multiply this oxygen by to give you seven. What you have to remember is that there's an oxygen here, 
So that's one. How many more do I need? I need six more. So if I put a three here, then that is balanced.